All right, welcome back, guys, to this series. In this series, like I said before, we are talking about learning React in 2020. So if you're trying to learn React in 2020, this is the version of React that you would like to learn, which includes only the modern stuff and includes only what you need to learn nowadays, basically, I guess, because React has changed a lot over the years. So today we are going to do setup. Basic, basic setup for Visual Studio Code. And I want you guys to remember that uh, some of these are just like my personal preferences on how to set up my uh, my IDE and choose, choose my IDE as well. Visual Studio Code is kind of the standard when it comes to IDE nowadays. It's built by Microsoft. It's really, really good. It has all the good uh, standards that you can, you can think of. It has IntelliSense and all that. I'm pretty damn sure that you guys must be aware of that by now. But if you're not, just it's one of the choices that you have to make early on. It's really good. You can just start with it and go on. And this is what I'm going to be using. And this is what most people are using nowadays anyway. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code, you can download it. I'm on Windows. You can download for Windows or you can get the ones from Mac or for Linux as well. Uh, so once you download it, it's just a standard install. You install that. And then um, once you have that installed, you can fire up from here. And this is the welcome screen that you have. Now, before we jump in and uh, try to set up our first React app, there's a couple of things that I want to run through uh, to get your guys set up to be exactly like my setup in, uh, in Visual Studio Code. Again, some of these are just personal preferences. You don't have to absolutely follow them. I'm just showing them in the beginning of the series. So um, when we move on to write actual code, you know how my code looks the way it is, basically, or all the... Um, all the extensions that I'm using and so on. So the first thing I always like to set up is this, is Sphera code. So Sphera code is basically a font and that font is made for programming, basically programming languages. And instead of having all these uh, things with the normal uh, code looking like that, a normal font would look like that in the code, but it's, it's quite different now. It looks uh, beautiful, especially with um, with, uh, with JavaScript, we use a lot of arrow functions. So the arrow functions will look, yeah, look beautiful. I think if you scroll down here, you can find a JavaScript uh, example and you can see that the triple equal becomes just one big equal. Your plus plus becomes one and so on. So you can do that uh, via doing two things. One, downloading the font and then second is enabling font legators. So if you scroll up here, I will leave uh, this description, I will leave this link in the description so you can download fear code you can also just google fear code uh, version 2 and you just go to download here once you click on that download you will get uh, a zip file called vr code 2 and uh, right click that and then whatever i'm using 7 uh, zip whatever you're using just extract it and then go into that folder you'll find different formats for the font i'm using ttf you can use whatever you want actually it's all the same you right click here and you right click on windows you do install for all users i already have it installed so that's fine on mac i think you have to copy it and paste it inside the font if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken i think they have changed that maybe you can just install it nowadays i'm not really sure about mac i'm no, i'm on a windows machine at the moment all right so once you have that installed you can go back uh to visual studio code go up to file click on that and then go down to preferences and settings and also you can get to that by uh, pressing control and comma so you go to settings and then What's good about the settings here is basically a JSON file where you can change and search for everything. Um, for, for, some, for a while, actually, it was just this JSON file that didn't have this user interface where you can change things. But you can search, for example, font, and then you can get uh, everything that has a font in it. And you can see here the editor, the font family, and then you make sure that you add this. You wouldn't have this in the beginning. I think you have monos or something like that. So you just add Fira code and then whatever the rest, you just keep it as it is. And then go to uh, inside the editors, font legators. You click on edit in uh, settings of JSON and add this line, which basically this is just a JSON um, object that we pass on to Visual Studio Code itself. And we are telling it that in the editors, you have font legators are equal to true. So you are enabling the font legators. So what are font legators? Uh, legators is basically what combines uh, things to be like that, what combines uh, two equals to be like that and three equals to be like that. So these are the font legators. 
So once you set up your uh, your edit your font family to have Fira code, and once you set up, you add that extra line at the end there, which is called editors uh, font ligators dot font ligators equal true. I also leave all of that in the video description below. Once you have all of that, you can uh, you have to restart VS Code actually. So once you restart VS Code, all right. So I just edited this so that the font is bigger. I hope this is useful for you guys so you can see what I'm writing. But basically what we have done here is we enable the code and the ligator. So if I do uh, two equal signs, it becomes like that. If I do three equal signs, it becomes like that. Your arrow functions will now look like that. And if you do not equal, it will be it will look like that. So yeah, this this is just really simple stuff, but it looks your it makes your code uh, easy, uh, readable and more easy to look at, more pleasing to be honest. This is one thing uh, that you can install if you wish. If you don't, you can just keep going, I believe. And then the second thing I also want to show you is these are really, really standard stuff, but almost everybody I know is using these. So you can, uh, it's a theme called material, uh, material theme icon. Uh, material icon theme these are the icons for your folders to icons and the html icons and so on these are really cool also to show you what type of file you're working with so you can install that quickly and then just click on it here and uh, that's it this is one of them and uh, there are many 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 different themes in uh, vs code the one that i'm using as my standard nowadays is night owl so it's um it's very pleasing. I always like to work in night mode in that way. Um, it's yeah, to me it's very pleasing. It has a, a, a light version, but it mostly I use this, which is the dark version of it. So you can install that as well. And then I I use just Night Owl here. And if you press Control K and then T afterwards, you can get a list of all your themes that you use. I am usually using um, I believe Material Theme. No, not this one. I'm usually using uh, Night Owl, which we just had now. Yep. And I also use uh, Material Theme Dark Contrast. Yep, this one. But I'm usually nowadays just using uh, Night Owl, the dark one. So if you just go to scroll down here, we just installed it. So Night Owl. Yep, that's it. This is beautiful. I love it. So that's it. You do the Night Owl. And then the last extension we also like to install is called Simple Simple React Snippet. So these snippets, oh, uh, Simple React Snippets here, Simple React Snippets. This has 340,000 downloads. So this is just uh, simple snippets that we are going to be using in React all the time. So it's good to have something that you just type a couple of words, a couple of letters, and then it will continue the rest. I am usually using this quite extensively, SFC, Stateless Functional Component. You just type SFC, and then you tap, and then it will give you that. And you will see how we will use it. It's really good to have it installed, so get that installed as well. And you will see this when you start coding, that it will make your life way much easier. So once you have that installed, I think you already have your VS Code set up uh, beautifully. So everything here should be good to go. Now, in order to start with React, um, there is a very, very easy way to start developing for React, which is called Create React App. So this is just um, an, an NPM package that's developed by Facebook, where it can enable you to run and a very very easy one kind of one kind of one click setup to go start with a React app where you can do everything. Uh, React works um, using Babel and it's using JSX and there's a lot of things happening in the back end, but you don't have to know all of that right now. What you need to know is just that you, if you use Create React app, you create an app and then you just start working from that and it's really good. So we need to install that as well. So the way you install that is you need to first install Create React app. So I'm going to click Command, uh, Command J on Mac on Control J on Windows. Just type NPM install. So you're installing a package from NPM. Give it uh, the G, which is a global package, a global flag to make it a global package for all your projects. And then the name of the package is create dash react react. Sorry, <laughs> create dash react app. And you press enter here. And then this is supposed to go and install this package for all uh, your environments whenever wherever and all the projects basically, and that's done. You can see here added 91 packages. 
once you do that then you can actually create a react app which will give you some kind of scaffolded react app that includes all the things that you need to start developing for react okay so once you have create react app installed we can now go back into our main um main uh, visual studio code window and we can click on open folder here so now i want you to i have a, pro a folder called web projects here where i keep my projects and you can right click here and make a new folder now this folder is going to be the name of your project and of your app and make sure that this folder name doesn't contain any uh, capital letters so i'm just going to do a folder called weather here so that's it you go into that folder and uh, select folder now visual studio code is looking into that folder beautiful so if i press ctrl j now i can do npx uh, create create uh, this keyboard is definitely not the best create react dash app and then i put a dot here now the reason i'm putting a dot here is that when you do npx create react app um, create react app is expecting you to give it a name so say for example if i put here weather what's going to happen is that uh, create react app is going to create a folder called weather inside that weather folder which we are in already but i don't want that to happen i just wanted to create the app in the current folder so i can do this create react app dot i press uh once you press enter and now it's creating a new react app into that folder just give it some time because like i said react has a lot of dependencies uh, it's using babel uh, to compile and it's using eslint it just gives you um uh, like the standard stuff that you need for create react app you can see it's downloading react itself running the react dom library and all the other react scripts now my internet is not the best somehow so i will come back to you guys once this finishes all righty so that is done now you can see we have um it's just telling you that you can we're already in the folder itself and you can see we have a folder called node modules and we have the public folder this is what's being served and we have the source folder this is everything that we will be writing and we have a package package.json file which can show you uh, shows you the the scripts that we have and we have uh, the browser list to compile to and we have also the dependencies you can use we are using react react dom and react scripts and so on so all this is uh, beautiful now so we have this working now if i go to the, the command line and then just uh, in the terminal type npm start what will happen now is that um, this react app is going to start on my local server so if i look here i can see in uh, localhost uh, 3000 port 3000 i will see the normal standard react app exactly so this is the normal standard react app now i would like to spend just a couple of minutes just to show you what i mean by this is a normal standard react app you can see here i am opening the index.html that is inside the public which which would make sense so if i go to public here and i go to index.html you find that this is just basically empty so this is an empty HTML file. It doesn't have much. Does it just uh, just have an ID called root? Now what's happening here is that React is the one uh, rendering all of this stuff into the HTML file um, when you do the build. So this is already built. So when you run the app, React is going to use that JavaScript that we write for it, and it's going to inject all of that into uh, the HTML file. So what happens is we are going to be writing code here in app.js and in index.js and all that stuff. So I will show you exactly what's going on here as well. But when you write your code in the app, the JS, what happens is that React is going to render the result of whatever code that we put here. And you can see here that we have a header and we have a div with a class name called app and we have an image, which is exactly what you see here. So all of that code, all of that HTML code, this is a JSX, not properly HTML it's a bit different you don't need to worry about it now at all all you need to know now is that we can use parameters or we can use variables inside this almost the same as HTML uh, syntax so we can render more reactive more dynamic stuff and what happens is that react is going to take all of that and put it inject it into that index.html file 
Now, the way React works in that instance is that right now we have, this is app.js, so this is, um, you can you can imagine this being a component. So this is one of the components we will be creating. It's just an app, it's a component called app. And as if you remember from our uh, my, my last video, this is just a functional component. We are importing React from the top, importing some resources, CSS and logo, and we are just doing this as a functional component and we are exporting that functional component. So we have a functional component called app and that functional component is returning this HTML stuff. It's just take it for now as that it's basically HTML stuff. And what happens is that if you go to index.js, uh, this is telling React that we need to render using the React DOM library. We are rendering that component called app into document that get element by ID into the root. That's it. So this is basically just a very, very basic structure of how React works. So what is, what's going on here again, just to stress it, is that I have the app.js that has that renders all that HTML stuff, and then I am taking that app the JS importing it into index.js and this index.js is using the react dom library to render my app into the root folder into the root uh, div uh, apologies into the root div inside my index.html file here which is here beautiful so what are we going to do starting from the next uh, video is that we are going to start writing different other components that we can reference later into the app components so instead of this just rendering some HTML files it will be rendering our components and whatever we have inside the app component here is going to be referenced into the index.js which you really don't have to touch at all and from that uh, we will be rendered that will be rendered into the index.html which is being served to everyone who visits our app that's it for this uh, video. I just wanted to make a video just to tell you how you set up everything and just to give you a good overlook of how React works and how Create React app works. Uh, that's all. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, dislike it. Uh, please make sure that you share this video if you actually think it's useful. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.